How's it going guys? Exciting day here inside X. We just got a fresh Yamaha here and uh, we're at Rude's Garage. We're gonna take it to him. He's gonna recreate this beautiful Yamaha into the Parts Canada Dream Bike. I, I know Rude's loves the two stroke, so we're gonna bring it old school here. And uh, we're actually, he's got something up his sleeve. So I'm gonna let, it, let him tell you guys what we're doing here, but uh, I gotta bring it to him. Dream bike, let's go. Paul Rudy has been riding motocross for 30 years. So got out of racing a little bit, got out of riding for a little bit, but then got back into it and got more into working on bikes, uh, restoring old bikes, got that nostalgic feel. I get a little misty eyed for the 90s, those bikes. So I'll take you for a tour around the shop. So back when I had that 87 DR100 and we were riding in a field, this guy came out and uh, started talking to me and said his brother was a mechanic for a pro team and he came out and he gave me this jersey that Ricky Johnson wore and that's where I got my that's what I wanted to do an 86 250 restore so we talked about the Johnson jersey I'm a big Ricky Johnson fan um, and that's what inspired me to do the 86 250 um, it's not a 100% build it's 99% but I like to ride this bike um, did the whole thing top to bottom, motor's completely, completely done. So this is a 97 CR500. Um, if you know bikes, you know what a 500 is all about. If you've had the privilege of riding one, you really know what it's all about. These things are beasts. This is my current project. This is a 91 CR250. Um, didn't go with the OEM look on this one. I wanted to go more with a 90s look so and that the seat inspired the whole thing I found this seat and I found these old levers and uh, Just kind of painting and doing things along the way to match that era all 90s 04 CR125 Long story with this bike, but this was a this was a good experience for me this bike. I bought this bike and um tore it right down to nothing. Absolutely every single piece of this bike I went through, I redid. If it's not new, it's been fully inspected and redone. Um, this, is a, this, is a, this is a cool bike for me. I know 04 CRs isn't the, isn't the 125 CR that everybody wants, but this bike, and uh, I learned a lot with this bike. This bike was cool to build. So we got some jerseys here, good decoration for the shop, big eBay shopper. The Thor Velocity, a lot of 90s stuff. 1-800 Collect Team, signed by some of the guys. Larry Ward, Scott Sheik, Damon Huffman signatures. I didn't get those signed, but I bought the jersey off somebody and they had those signed. All these jerseys, I mean Fox, with the barbed wire, all the old AXO stuff. It's all super 90s, early 90s when the gear was just, it was just there, the 90s was it. Well, Roots, got a blank canvas here. Nice, fresh Yamaha 252 stroke. And you know what? We got Parts Canada, Royal Distributing help us out. What do you want to do with this blank canvas? I want to do everything to this bike. Parts Canada carries some awesome parts from some awesome manufacturers. We're going to take this bike back 30 years to 1991 when Bradshaw was king and everybody loved their two strokes because that's all there was. Yeah, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. So you're thinking white plastic. Um, I think it was a magenta color, if I can recall. And uh, we got, I mean, the blue rims. We're gonna have to do everything. Everything blue, we're gonna have to do white or, or a black or something. Yeah, we're gonna strip this bike right down cosmetically. All the plastic's gone, fuel tank's gone. We're gonna go all white on this thing. We're gonna take the motor. We're gonna ceramic coat some parts to match the GYTR parts. We're gonna take the wheels off. We're gonna put some A60XL wheels on this thing. We're gonna lace those bad boys up, run some Dunlop tires on there. We're gonna go with the um, Works Edition pipe from FMF. 
and we are going to do everything with this bike that we possibly can. First things first, when you're breaking down a bike, organization is key. You wanna make sure everything you're taking out of the bike goes back where it came from. Bolts are different lengths, bolts are different styles. And as soon as you break down a bike and you have hundreds of bolts laying in a pile, you will not know where they go. I promise you, I've made the mistake. Magnetic tray, simple, easy, totes, bins, labeling, everything, organization, first and foremost. So we're lucky enough to have a brand new machine to work on here and rip down to nothing. Everything's 10 out of 10. This bike is good to go, but not, everybody's, not everybody can get a brand new machine and you're buying an old machine and it's important to check over everything 100%. You wanna go over your entire bike. A lot of the stuff, uh, there's a lot of abuse, um, a lot of wear and tear, a lot of neglect and these bikes just over time, people just don't take care of them. You got a brand new bike, we're good with this. Everything's brand new, everything's tight, everything's fresh, everything's good. You buy your old bike, you're definitely gonna wanna go over it. And you're gonna wanna check everything out and make sure it's safe to ride, safety's key. We're gonna finish tearing this Yamaha down. Check back in later, Rude's Garage signing off. Welcome back to the garage. On this episode, we're gonna take a look at the suspension on our 2021 Yamaha YZ250. The suspension on your bike, regardless of the type of riding or racing you do, can be one of the most important things that you're gonna to do to your bike. We're gonna to talk to Steve Beatty at 26 Suspension and see what he has to tell us. Let's get these over to Steve at 26 Suspension. Come on in, Rudes. Nice. Nice. Brand new. I like it. Okay, time to get to work. Hey guys, uh, Steve Beatty here. I'm 26 suspension. Been doing suspension here in the shop since probably 2007. Um, raced many, many years myself, and I think I kind of got into suspension because I wasn't quite getting exactly what I was looking for on the racetrack the latter part of my career and started dibble dabbling in some suspension and then pretty much when I quit racing in 2006 I had some top US flat track guys that were like hey man now that you're done riding can you uh, you know wrench on our stuff for us and build us some good stuff and pretty much took off like that from there with 26 suspension so here we are I'm pretty pumped and excited to be part of the Parts Canada Dream Bike that these guys are building. They've asked me to do the suspension details for them. So Paul Rudy's is gonna be the guy riding it and doing the build. Paul is about 38, pushing the plus 40 class vet guy. Um, kind of got kids on the way, got one kid, get another one on the way, so the throttle comes back this way a little bit, not so much like this anymore. So what we're building is a 2021 YZ250. And out of the crate, 
these bikes are set up for somebody in around the 165 to 175 pound range. So Paul's pushing probably 230, big tall guy. And um, he exceeds, far exceeds the stock settings that come out of the crate with this bike. So we're gonna have to dig inside. First and foremost, the first thing you wanna do when you're building suspension for a rider is spring the bike to his weight. So, like I said, first and foremost, we're gonna have to stick some fork springs and a new shock spring in this thing. And then we're gonna have to just do some little bit of valving adjustment to compensate for the heavier springs to control a little bit of the action of the rebound and the compression. Okay, but that's enough of that for now. So let's uh, rip into this stuff and show you guys kind of what we're gonna do here as far as taking this stuff apart and the routine to doing some suspension for somebody. This here's the compression adjuster assembly. So it's gotta come apart. Do a small modification here. Sometimes you can't get in there with a pick. There's not enough room because of the Schrader valves in the way, you can't push this down far enough. So one of the tricks of the trade is you take a shim, give it a little bit of a bend behind the clip, walk the clip out. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, um, as a safety precaution, the manufacturer's uh, KYB in this case, the shocks KYB, they peen over the end of the shaft so that the nut cannot come loose during when the guys are riding. Um, it's strictly a liability. So what we're gonna do is chuck this up here in the lathe, we'll leave the threads back, and that way we can take this stack off and change the valving for Rudy's. This allows me to take the nut off now. So I've just cut, cut off where they peened it. Come in and fix the threads because now it's left the thread real sharp right here. So I'm just going to go back, redress the thread so everything looks brand new. Okay, so what we got going on here is here's the uh, internals of a shock as far as the valving goes. You've got a series of shims, different diameters, and different thicknesses is how we tune the shock. Compression side with the bigger diameter. Rebound, small side. We're gonna take this thing right now, so from the factory, we make sure it's flat, we're gonna deck it. As you can see, it's picking up the high spots, low spots where it's still black, so we'll keep decking it. Until the uh, piston shows that we've got it completely level and flat. Race Tech, Parts Canada pieces. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. There's a bit, a bit of a cool color scheme going on here with this bike as far as retro. So let me show you what we got going on here for colors. Okay, so we're part set of forks here. There's the um, damper rod with the rebound piston and the mid valve assembly right here. And same thing, I'd have to go back. I'm gonna do that in a little bit, but for now, I'll let you guys go. I'm going to, same thing, they've done a peen job here for like I explained earlier, so that the nuts can't walk off and how your shim stack fall off inside your fork. And they do the same thing on the compression assembly as well. So just have to go do a little bit of machine work, relieve the nuts, and then we can break this apart, deck the pistons, do some valving work for Paul, change out the spring rate, assemble it, put it all back together and get him out on the racetrack. Hey guys, thanks for popping by the shop here, seeing what we do and uh, I'm gonna let you guys go, boot you out the door. I'm gonna go to work on this stuff, get it done for Paul and we'll see you guys at the racetrack.
Welcome back to the garage. On this episode, we're gonna lace up and true some Excel wheels. We had to get rid of the blue wheels that Yamaha supplies OEM. We love the blue wheels, we love that look, but it's not gonna look exactly right with our 91 look. So we went with some black A60s. We're gonna use Yamaha's production OEM hubs, which are really good hubs, and we're gonna use some Excel spokes. So a few things we need to start with. We've got our Excel A60 wheel. We've got our OEM hub, already pressed the bearings and seals in that. We've got our Excel spoke kit, spoke wrench, spoke torque wrench, and truing stand. Next up, you're gonna want to find something around the house, anything, just a couple two by fours, just to prop this wheel up so it's approximately at about the middle height of the hub, like where it would sit on the bike if it was already laced up. This is gonna make putting your spokes in a lot, a little easier. All right, it's important, first off, when you get your spokes out of your kit, check and make sure they're all the same length. Sometimes there'll be different length like, spokes on wheels. Usually it's on the rear wheel, and uh, I've seen as many as three different lengths on a rear wheel. Start with the inner spokes. All the way around. As you're putting them in, you'll start to notice a pattern. They all point the same direction. So we got nine spokes, and we're gonna start putting in the upper spokes. These are gonna lay across the top of the inner spokes we just put in. They're gonna go in the opposite direction. You'll see that same pattern. So we have our outer spokes into the wheel and we have our nipples threaded on just a little bit. It's important not to thread those nipples on all the way because we're gonna have to get into putting them a certain distance in later, which is gonna make truing the wheel a lot easier. So we're gonna move to our inner spokes and same thing, we're gonna line them up whatever hole they go to on the rim. And in this case, and in most cases on front wheels, it's gonna go to the hole in between the two that you already put in. So it's gonna be the third hole. So we've completed the one side of lacing. We're gonna flip the wheel over and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. Honestly, the best part of doing a restore is the graphics, the stickers, stickers. Yeah, the last part, it just brings it all home, right? It, 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 it's, it's kind of because it's one of the easiest things to do and it gives it the look you've been waiting for but it's just the finished touch. You know your project's done and uh, you can ride it if you're gonna ride it. You can shelf it if you're gonna shelf it just to look at it, which is cool too. Um, yeah, I think that's the funnest part for me. So we finished putting in all our spokes and next thing to do is we're gonna tighten the nipples on the spokes and we're gonna tighten those nipples to the exact same length on every single spoke all the way around. This is gonna pull the hub in the proper spot in the wheel center and it's gonna make truing the wheel afterwards a lot easier. So this completes the lacing portion of our wheel. Next, we're gonna true this thing up so we can get it on the bike. So we got our Motion Pro Axis truing stand. Nice thing about this stand is that it's single-sided and makes uh, getting your hands in to tighten the spokes up a lot easier. As you've seen, all our spokes are still really loose and we're gonna start and we're gonna tighten our spokes up, each spoke a quarter turn all the way around the wheel. Now this is a timely job, but taking your time with this and just doing a quarter turn at a time is gonna bring everything in evenly and it's gonna make truing this wheel a lot easier. It might take a few times going around the wheel to get them till the nipples start to seat, and you will notice when they start to seat. Mr. Rudy's, got you some goods. Got the fresh suspension done for my old Stevie, and uh, Royal's got great deals on tires right now. We got some of these, so. I like it. We're ready to put this stuff oh, in. Buddy, let's go. Excellent. 
We got this Motion Pro tire station. This thing is gonna make life a lot easier. <laughs> I'm used to just using a five gallon bucket on the floor and this is, uh, man, this thing, just the height of it. The air tank holds a five or 10 gallon tank. It's, it, it, everything's there. It's perfect for taking to the track because you're not taking your air compressor with you. Yeah, no doubt, man. I, like the five gallon pail growing up was just a nightmare. Yeah, but, for uh, sure. Grab, grab that rim, throw her on there, bud. All Let's right. get her. Take this in. off the stand. This one's done. Yeah, this one's done. She's straight as an arrow. All right, you got to grab a few things out of this old five-gallon pail yeah, I was telling you about. Here's yeah, my. At least you're just putting is, it on. This is my old. Uh, this is my old tire station. <laughs> I like that though. You can keep it for. You know, you know what? It worked for a lot of years. I got a lot of old cool stickers on here. I can't part with it, so now it's just my bucket where I keep all my stuff. Such a '90s thing. I had uh, Colt Nichols on the show today, and. Uh, he was talking about Guy Cooper, and I was like, man. Love it. The Love 90s. It. These kids, man, they, they still appreciate the 90s like we do, so they it's need, good. They need to. They need to respect your elders. Okay, so we got our tube in. Pop this bad boy on. So we're going to start opposite of the rim lock. And again, being careful not to scratch this. Put it in where it's loose and bring it over. Don't try and shove it in where the tire's firm against the rim. I actually like that. I, bring it back here and bring it in. Yeah, I, and you know what? That's where most of the scratches come from. You need me that. Now you need the, the bead Let's buddy. put the bead buddy in, Let's yeah. Get this thing's really going to help us out. The biggest thing people do is they try and pry this wheel on. You want to push this down into the drop center yeah. of the rim, and that's going to give you more slack this way to get yep. this thing on. All about slack, buddy. That's it. All right. I got her. Yeah, you got it from here. Get her in there. I'll let my B buddy do the work. That's it. And yeah, you just want to feel in there and make sure that tube isn't going to get pinched yep. where your bead is on your uh, on your rim there. Because you're going to be pumped, your tires all together, you're going to go put it on the bike, and maximum, by the time you get to the track, it's going to be flat. Maximum traction though today. Now you see how it's up right here? Yeah. Watch this. You push it down here. Makes it easy. It's going to give you some slack. So this tire station is cool. And we talked about putting the uh, putting the air tank in it. Perfect for the track. Nobody's oh, bringing the compressor. Yeah. So we'll put some air in here and make sure she so pops up all the way on the bead. Oh, that's my favorite part. Yeah, that's the soap and water. Like it, the bead cream's cool, but um, do another layer of soap and water after you get the tire on because it runs out a little quicker than that. Yeah. Than this stuff. Yeah, and just feel around. Make sure she sees it all the way. You can see it. Yeah. Perfect. Too, it's perfect. I think we're good. So we have our wheels completely done, tires on. We have our suspension back from 26. We've got our ride engineering clamps. We're going to need those to put the forks on. Boots grab, signing up. This is an exciting time for this bike. We have a lot of our parts back so we can start assembling it so it starts to look like a real dirt bike. We got these really beautiful clamps from Ride Engineering. These things are gonna set this bike off. We got a bunch of stuff from Ride Engineering. We have calipers, brake lines, and all these things put together. The black anodized finish, really gonna make this bike look good. It's nice these triple clamps come with the bearings on them. Unless you got the right tools, these things aren't the easiest things to put on. Money. It's Yeah, because we have the white and pink thing going on with this bike because it's the 1991 look we're going for. So to throw on any other color isn't really going to work out, but we still want to set it off. So black is our go-to. Yeah, for sure. I look for parts too. And for a bike that's been around for so long and stood the test of time, you think there'd be more, like let's just, we're talking about triple clamps. You think there'd be more triple clamps out for this thing, but no, these guys, uh, these guys have it dialed in and they have the market and we're going to use them. The two strokes, man, just, I just want to, the first kick, she fires up after all the work we've done and just barks at us. You don't want to get this, you, know, you got that for me? Thanks, man. You don't want to get this thing too tight or else you're going to have some resistance here. But once you put the forks on, a little bit of more weight helps out with that too. That, yep. the old two strokes, you got the uh, the clutch, the kill switch, the throttle, and uh, the brake line, you're good to go. That is one of the best things about them. Other <laughs> than the fact that it's a two stroke and it's just nostalgic as motocross gets, yeah. they're easy to work on. Yeah, they're they so are. easy to work on. Oh, beautiful parts, works connection. They supplied us with everything they had available for this bike. 
Yeah, Ryan uh, over there. Man, my brother used to uh, ride for him back in the day yeah. uh, when we were privateers. I think he still runs some of his product on the KTMs, but uh, man, just like right away remembered me. This was back in 2013 I talked to him. And uh, he's more than willing to, you know, set it up and, and work with us. Obviously, they're part of the uh, Parts Unlimited family and uh, works good. You got this beautiful kit designed specifically for this bike from Specbolt. They got everything dialed in for us. So we're going to grab the ones for the trip clamps. Oof. I think this one is definitely one. Yeah, these are the lines. When you're putting there. in a bolt, you know what the best way, to, best way to tell is when you're putting in a bolt, just seat it to the first thread. That's out like three quarters of an inch. That's too much. You know, if it's out like a quarter inch or so, you're, you're good. You just got, you got to catch those threads. I'm happy with that. So it's going to be the shorter ones out of this time. Yeah. And these packs are specific with the amount. So we should have eight. Yep. I got three over here. Okay. See, you Get know what? Started. People helping people here, Roots. That's right. You know? So you got, how many got there? One, two, three, four. Yeah, no, they gave us the exact amount. Perfect. Yeah, I got three. There's, yeah, there's one more in here. One more? Yeah. Right. Let's both slide them in, man. Let's get these things on there. Oh, see, he's got the old specs on there. Yeah, he's uh, he's good with the label. I like that. I always like reading those things. We'll just make sure to put that label out. Yeah. Then you can yeah, just give reference him a, it. Yeah, just give him a twist. Sometimes these are stiff to get in. Yeah, sometimes these forks are a little sticky going in. So yeah. just screwdriver, just give it a little bit of spread at the top. Okay, I'm gonna set these things basically right at the cap because I need as much height as I can get. All right. Okay, so cool little trick here. To keep your fork seals from failing over time and weeping oil, it's a good idea to let the pressure out of your forks. There's a couple little screw caps in here, flathead screwdriver, and you're gonna wanna loosen these off and you're always gonna hear a little bit of pressure come out of these. Alternative, Motion Pro, got these from Parts Canada bleeders you take these right out you put these in and when you're done for the day you just depress on the top there bleeds the air out of the fork super easy one thing I inexpensive god you got to make sure it's on a stand because you don't want the forks compressed that's right so yeah those are the things i need growing up because i wouldn't be looking across the floor for some bleeders you know it would have been nice if they had these growing up <laughs> yeah i know Rudes, I see you got uh, this stuff back from Andrew. Yep. Man, I like this because this is like we talked about. It. This is what we grew up on: uh, is the rentals with the, the color, and then mm -hmm. so I like that. Yep. That we sweet, always uh, we always went with the uh, the color pattern that our favorite rider had. Um, so yeah, Andrew Kelch, Lampton Dipping and Coating painted these up perfectly, powdered these just to model that old 7 8 bar look. Yes. But we're not going to run 7 8 <laughs> No, bar. we don't need that. In 2021, <laughs> we're running the inch, inch and an eighth twin walls. These are my favorite. I like the crossbar. I'm a crossbar guy. So, yeah, me too. Yeah, let's put these on our ride triple clamps, see how these look. This is the fun stuff, man. This is the fun stuff. I like the look of that. Renthal bars, you throw in Renthal grips, obviously? We are so, yeah. <laughs> yes. Renthal is is my company. I love I love Renthal, man. Yeah. yeah. I just think like just like a lot of things, you stick to a brand. You kind of get it at a young age, and you just stick to a brand. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You got your brand. It works for you. Run it. Yeah. We're not gonna torque these down just yet. We're just gonna get them. Yeah. We're not even snug. We're just gonna get them set. And yep. then we're going to position these things where you want them, where I want them, whatever. Individual preference. See, I've never used those, uh, how they have the four bolts per side, but I can see that I have issues with sometimes if you over jump something, the bars roll back. So I feel like those, those double pinch, like mu must be better. So we're going to put the shock in this bike. So you can see we got the color match still with the 91 theme going on. Same with the Renthal bars. Our guy at Lampton Dipping and Coatings did this for us. Steve set this thing up specific to my weight, my riding style. We're going to put this thing in the bike. Almost got our roller done here. So we've got our Renthal twin ring, Xcel A60 wheel, Dunlop uh, MX52 tire. And we've got some nice works connection uh, axle blocks here. The cool thing about these is that they're going to allow us, they've got this point right here and they're going to allow us to adjust our chain with a uh, with a micrometer. So we're pretty excited about our progress on our YZ250. 